food can actually take you somewhere. You can take a bite of a biscuit and close your eyes and there you are standing next to your mother with her hand on your shoulder. And it happens a lot. I go into the dining room, a 75 year old man will say, my mother made these biscuits. I can remember my mother right now. And that's the most important thing about this show is that it, not, it will help people create food memories for their children. It will not only help people make these foods and remember their past, but create a legacy for their families so that when they close their eyes, mother is right there next to them. Therese made um, this Danish, low carb, and Sophia made this. Sophia, what's this called? Where's Sophia? Ogacha, Ogacha, Ogacha. No, 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 no. They just can't help themselves. No, they can't. The mothers that I work with are all so unique. They're all so special. They each have a story, whether one is an escapee of a concentration camp or came over from Italy with no money in their pockets because a brother said, hey, it's time to come over and you'll have a better life. So uh, we've got a troupe of mothers that we continue to enjoy and uh, share their foods with on a regular basis. Seeing all these ladies here really inspires me to want to carry down some of the traditions that might be getting lost in my family, you know, as we get further and further away from Hungary and Poland where they came from. So my great grandma came over with a whole bunch of her sisters and brothers and um, they all lived together in the same town in Vermont and it was this little Hungarian enclave and everybody's gone now except for my grandma. She's the last one left. She's the last one that still speaks Hungarian. She's the last one. Sorry. <laughs> She's the last one that, that remembers everything, so I thought it'd be really nice for her to be able to pass that on and sort of to be um, remembered, you know, and so that I could learn too, because I live so far away. Mother food has to exist nowadays because there was a time when the place of a restaurant was to provide food that was different than the homes. So nobody would order meatloaf in a restaurant. Their mother made it every week at, at home. As people get further and further away from home cooking, as people are eating out more and more, there's a growing need for people to be able to experience mother food. There's a need for people to be able to eat the foods of their past. Look at them, they've got their aprons know, on, they're all yeah. ready to cook, huh? Well, this, uh, in Italy, that's what they do all the time. That's all they do? Cooking and cooking and cooking. That's well, all. and you're keeping that legacy here mm -hmm. in America. Yeah. You're cooking and cooking and cooking. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cook some more it's today. <laughs> and then who's Tony's this? Tony's mom. So what's, wait a minute, your dishwasher's outside or washing machine well, is outside? Well, this is another house. This is like... Uh, What's going to set Mother's house. Cooking apart from the other cooking shows is it will be one part culinary anthropology, one part reality show, and it will be instructional. A lot of cooking shows out there will sit there and they'll see a talking head and they're pouring yeah. a cup of this into this and a cup of that into that. No, that's not how I work. I want people to understand the whys and the wherefores. So we'll see a mother clean an eggplant or chop an onion, but then we'll go back to the studio and we'll show people why do we do it this way. Give love notes, tips on how to peel garlic, how to chop parsley, why why do we then saute the vegetables? How do we coax flavors out of the food? So you want the eggplant skins to get limp so you can... Yeah, yeah that'd be you know, kind of raw, you know, you just put something... Okay, so it's just limp enough so that we can stuff them, right? Exactly, yeah. All right. So now you're okay. going to take this stuffing yeah, and fill I'm, your eggplant I'll shells. My egg yes. Mm. Did you mm. stuff this? So you're not being fancy. You're just putting it in well, however not, it is. This thing, you're not have to be fed because the, the sauce is going to cover up everything. Okay. You know? All right. So who needs See? to worry? See? Oh. I want to eat it now. Yeah. I'll put it soon. <laughs> <laughs> Usually your family's in here sticking their fingers in the sauce, yeah, making the, sure you're doing it right. Some, somebody, they wait until I'm finished because they want to scrub the pan too. Oh. When That's I lick my the spoon. Daughter. That's my daughter. So she looks to see if there's any left over in the pan and, then, and she yeah, has uh, the At least pan. she waits until you're done. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Mom. I'm going over to Jan. Hi, Mom. I'll see you later. Well, that's what we were saying earlier. Jan and I were talking, and we were saying uh -huh. how, you know, when the mother cooks, the kids never leave. So that's a hint for all mothers. We cook, uh -huh. and your I kids will never leave. If, if we don't show up, 
within 48 hours, we get phone calls wanting to know if we're okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 So you have to see him every two days? No, every Bummer. day. <laughs> every day you see your mother? <laughs> I've always dreamt of preserving mother food for posterity. So that's my mission. My mission is to serve the food that mothers would make if only they had time, the foods that mothers used to make. And now, with the TV show, my mission is to bring this food to everybody. And if only we're able to inspire people to spend a Sunday cooking with their families, sitting down and enjoying the meals like we do with some of these mothers, and we see that the families want to come home, the children want to be there, they're dying to eat the food that their mothers made. If people can just do that, maybe one day a week, I think the world will be a better place.